Emil, well played. After the disappointment and criticism of last week, how much did you need that? A big win over the Champions League finalists. Yeah, definitely. I feel like it was an important result for us. You know, we had to dig deep. You know, it was a really tough test for us tonight, but yeah, I think it's really important for our season. So, yeah. So obviously the goal was a mistake, but did you force it a little bit with the pressing? <laughs> yeah, we, we worked on that in training this week, um, pressing high press. So I feel like we've done well to make them make a mistake. And then obviously Alba set me up, which is obviously good. I just wonder if it was a nervy few seconds for you as the ball bobbled towards the post, because you maybe didn't catch it the sweetest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Emil, well played. After the disappointment and criticism of last week, how much did you need that? A big win over the Champions League finalists. Yeah, definitely. I feel like it was an important result for us. You know, we had to dig deep. You know, it was a really tough test for us tonight, but yeah, I think it's really important for our season. So, yeah. So, obviously, the goal was a mistake, but did you force it a little bit with the pressing? <laughs> yeah, we, we worked on that in training this week, um, pressing high press. So, I feel like we've done well to make them make a mistake and then obviously Alba set me up, which is obviously good. I just wonder if it was a nervy few seconds for you as the ball bobbled towards the post, because you maybe didn't catch it the sweetest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ball bobbled towards the post because you maybe didn't catch it the sweetest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely, you know, but this happens sometimes, you know, I'm just happy that I went in, but yeah, like you said, it was, it was a lucky finish. It's your second Premier League goal on the back of the one at the weekend. What does it mean? Well, it means so much, you know, to score for this fantastic club. Um, I just want to keep pushing on now and, uh, yeah. I've got a little memory of doing an interview with you where you said that Chelsea might have rejected you as a kid. Does that make it a bit sweeter? Um, is that yeah. right? Have I got that right? Uh, yeah, you got that right, but obviously, you know, that's the past. I'm obviously focused on Arsenal now and Arsenal, my club, so, yeah. How much are the thighs burning after that second half effort? Oh, I'm so tired, but I feel like the team, we, uh, we, played, we played well today, you know. We looked tired at times, and, but we had to dig deep, and, yeah, we're happy with the three points today. What do you think you showed as a group by digging deep, by the effort you put in? Um, you know, I think it showed our character, how much fight we got in us. Maybe answer one or two questions? <laughs> Yeah, definitely at times, you know, I feel like we defended really well um, at, in patches and stuff and I feel like after the tough season, I thought that was a good, that, good performance from us today. What do you think the future is for Emil? Do you think with this young group of players you have, yourself, Bukayo, others with this manager, yeah. do you feel like you're not so far away from the, the top table of English football as it might look? Yeah, definitely. I feel like we're working really hard in training and, and I feel like we showed this season how good we can be. And yeah, like you said, we're just going to keep pushing forward and I feel like with this team we can do big things. A little nutmeg on Thiago Silva as well, wasn't there? <laughs> oh, I can't remember, to be fair, <laughs> but if it was, I'll take it. But um, yeah, I'm really happy with the result today. Well done. Thank you. Well done, Emil. It's been a good couple of days for Emil Smith. He scored against West Brom, his first yeah. Premier League goal, two in two now. And I suppose almost similarly to the West Brom win, it's the, the future shining lights that yeah. have come away with the yeah. headlines. Um, Emil Smith rode there and see Saka getting taken off. It's disappointing to see him go, but... Um, yeah, I, I think that we you, you, we can't underestimate the, the levels that those young players have got to to get Arsenal wherever Arsenal are. It's just down to the, the Sackers and Emil Smith Rowe because it's coincidental that once them once he got in the side alongside Saka, who's carrying the team for such a long time on his own, things started to happen a bit more, yeah. bit more creativity in that area. Erdogan comes in, which, trying to get the ball into that area to then get Oba going and. He's been a major um, part in Arsenal getting anything out of this season that's positive. Yeah, but the way Arsenal dug in deserves some credit, does it not, Glenn? I think they do, yeah. I mean, they did dig out. Chelsea didn't open them up, didn't stretch them enough, but that back five stayed intact, mm. particularly second half. And it was clear that's what they were going to do. They were going to get behind the ball. I mean, Smith Rowe there was saying, I feel so tired. Mm. He probably doesn't, you know, he's never felt so tired and not had the ball. Mm. You know, normally you're tired when you want, you want to be tired from, from keeping the ball, but they actually defended. The, 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 the midfield were very on the toes of the back three. There was no spaces, mm. hardly at all, for Chelsea to uh, penetrate. Chelsea, it was really all, all... The questions weren't answered by Chelsea. They were the team that had to open Arsenal up. Mm. You know, they got a fortunate goal, they got a goal gifted to them, mm. and they sat in there and said, right, what they didn't do is they didn't break at all, they didn't mm. have a hold-up play and get out, and that's a concern longer term. You're not going to win games playing like that no. over a period of time. 
but on a one-off situation, they've got the three points, dogged at the back, tight, they'll take it. You talk about it as a fortuitous goal, but as Smith Rowe mentioned there, it was something they'd worked on in the week, just but, putting pressure on, and who knows what might come of it. Well, yeah, well, the thing is, like we see there, I think that Kirk Zuma is somebody that should be put pressure on, especially playing on the left-hand side of, of the defence. He's not comfortable, you can see him there, he looks very nervous, and that's, that's what they did, that's what Arsenal did. They, they've done that well during the season, chosen their opportunities to, to press teams, and. That's what I'd like to see more of, to be honest, um, and, and, and attack teams. But I think that the plan was always to, mm. to attack, Ch to try and press Chelsea, because I don't think we were gonna, ever going to play through them. But This is this interesting, because many will look at Jorginho as yeah. maybe the, the primary fault for this, for this goal, or the gaff, I should say, but it's Zuma's part in all of this that you think well, is we saw, key. Yeah, we saw it early on. He's, he's actually saying, I need options. He's got options. Um, he had options in a couple of opportunities in this move. And I think that the, pr the pressure they've put on him to make him have to play back to, to Jorginho, who then was rushed by Emil Smith-Rowe, saw his opportunity, and then um, Arsenal got the goal. Yeah. But like, I I've always thought that it was a weakness, we, Kurt Zuma. We could be very easily saying, if that ball goes into Gilmore, which it should have done, yeah. from his, off his left foot, Zuma, yeah. we're saying, look how they've played through the press. Yeah. And, and Chelsea would have been right at Arsenal. And the difference is that that poor decision from Zuma yeah. to go back to Jorginho and Jorginho's panic mm. and back pass with a keeper outside, then all this happens. But it, we could be <laughs> analysing it the other way. Chelsea might have gone and scored from there yeah. by beating the press. Yes. But, you know, you've got to give credit to Arsenal. They were prepared to throw th four players up there yeah. and press hard. There wasn't much room for error for Smith Rowe there, was there? No, and like I say, he, he really flashed his leg. I was delighted for it to go in for him because... You can imagine if he misses that, it's, all, it's almost like an open goal, but yeah. he got the luck he deserved. Now, that is hugely surprising if you have a look at errors leading to goals. Um, eight from Chelsea, uh, behind Liverpool's nine. Um, seven of those, though, did come under Frank Lampard, so they clearly mm. have, or well, six of them have come from Frank Lampard, but, you know, they clearly have tightened up in that respect, but it's, it's reared its head, and the same set of players have... have overseen that change. Well, they all over the pitch, you know. It wasn't just the defensive side and giving a, a, a gift of a goal away, but even with the ball and the movement off the ball, that wasn't the Chelsea that we've seen this season. Why? Why was well, it? Well, they, they've got two cup finals. It's human nature. They've got two cup finals to mm, play in. Yeah. You know, is their mind somewhere else? They have got a little bit of a, a gap there between West Ham mm. at the moment, or, or whoever's fifth and sixth. So, it's human nature. They've just come down. Yeah. You know, it's a big result against City as well. You know, that, yeah, was, that was a good result. For I them. think it is a little bit, you know, of coming down, and, and they had to pick themselves up. They looked like a team that thought that eleven was going to start at Wembley on Saturday, mm. and they were playing within themselves. Mm. But no, that team was about getting the getting the team, getting the team for mm. Wembley. Mm. Show me what you got. The manager saying, and they didn't look like right. that. They looked like a team that was saying, "Well, we've we've got other things on our mind," yeah. and if you do that, you, you come a cropper in this league. Mm -hmm. We saw Chelsea come so close in the dying stages. They hit the woodwork twice, of course. Yeah. I mean, on another day, if you have a look at this first one, they, they were literally a fingertip away from, from equalising. They were. Right? It was a, I think the goalkeeper, the gaffer, pointed it out. I didn't actually see I thought it was a good save at first, but I've, he was very lucky with this. You look mm, at when it comes from here, yeah. where his hand is and his, where he gets the fingertips, he's very fortunate there. <laughs> And then I think Giroud, this is just going, it's just a little bit too high. I think he's done brilliantly yeah. to get it back on target. But I think Arsenal, you know, the way they defended um, today um, so resolutely, I think they, they do deserve that little bit of luck. But I think if I'm Chelsea, I probably think to myself, we could have done more. They should have done more. They yeah. should have taken more chances passing balls into mm -hmm. forwards and trying to pass balls into space. They didn't do it. You can always see what that body language is, isn't it? It's just not going to be our day. Yeah. He was as frustrated as the players were, to be honest, out there. But he, he would be the first to know that was nowhere near the standard that mm. they'd set, they've set this season mm. and they've come down from it. What I think they needed, they needed a... You know, that's the one thing maybe I said before the game, they've got every sort of aspect, component. Maybe they need to play poorly and, and, and get a point or win, and they haven't done that. Because they keep going 1-0 up, a lot of the times, Chelsea, they need to hit a team on the break. That's yeah. when they're very best in Europe and yeah. when they go 1-0 up, that suits them. They're a very exciting team on the break. They can defend like Arsenal did second half. They mm. can defend like that mm. with five men across the back tight. But today, there was only a couple of occasions where there was some space second yeah. half, particularly behind Arsenal's defence, mm. and they actually did get in behind. Hudson-Odoi got across. 
and yeah. pull it. That's the only chance they had second half apart from what we just saw yeah. a header. So they've got work to do still when a team when they've got to chase a game. Yeah. And while it wasn't pretty overall from <laughs> Arsenal, there's no doubt Mikel Arteta will want to accentuate the positives of the way that they kept that clean sheet in the end. Yeah, because it takes a lot to um, to, to stay that disciplined, you know, because like I said, Chelsea are a quality side. Look, you've got everybody back. OK, Aubameyang's up there, but then you watch Aubameyang. Even he goes and gets involved to make sure that they, you know what I mean, that they, they, they kind of put them under pressure and keep them at bay. You know, you see Chelsea trying trying to come, and then they go wide again. But, like, look at Arsenal's, look at Arsenal's defensive lines. Look at them again. Mm. That's very difficult. And then you have to have people who are willing to pass the ball through those little areas to then hold it. Can he hold it there? Can he get something? Can Reese James now, can he get that in? Then it comes to Hudson Odoi, bam, over the bar. So mm. Arsenal have done well. Trying to come, and then they go wide again. But, like, look at Arsenal's, look at Arsenal's defensive lines. Look at them again. Mm. That's very difficult. And then you have to have people who are willing to pass the ball through those little areas to then hold it. Can he hold it there? Can he get something? Can Reese James now, can he get that in? Then it comes to Hudson Odoi, bam, over the bar. So mm. Arsenal have done well doing that. I think not only is it like we're showing the bodies behind the ball, but if you look, wherever the ball's been passed, there's a first man getting the head down. There was there again, look, getting yeah. the head down. They're pressing the ball there. there. One comes out there, a little bit of pressure. Another bit of pressure and then they win the yeah. ball. Mm. So you can get bodies behind the ball, but not work very hard. Beyond the, yeah. But they pressed the ball. The first man always was pressing the ball. And that's quite telling. Although, look at Tierney. I mean, literally, he's up there almost in the attacking third with Aubameyang, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, but T that's what Tierney does. He his natural game is to try and get forward, even though he's a defender. But you look where Saka is. He's also his game's to get forward. Look where he's had to end up. Ian, what, what do you think about the, Mikel Arteta's game plan in terms of looking to contain Chelsea rather than trying to look for that second goal in well, the I second think... half? Well, I think that um, the way Arsenal play with the players we had on the pitch, Saka, Erdogan, um, Aubameyang, yeah. Smith-Rowe, that doesn't sound to me like a team that you're putting out to be defensive. And in the end, you see Saka and um, Aubameyang get taken off. You're, it, it looks to me like it's a team where you've got Partey and you've got um, El Nenny to get the ball into Erdogan mm. so we could cause Chelsea problems. In the end, I think the way the game transpired, it kind of, Chelsea put the pressure on and then they started to, they reverted back to it. I think you could see how disappointed he was. He was actually, wasn't sure that he was... He was surprised that it was his there. number that came up, actually. I, I think even you look at how uh, Aubameyang looked, when, because as a striker, Gaffer, you look at, Aubameyang seen Saka going off, he's thinking, hang on a minute. Where's my service? That's, that's, where's my service where's going? Where's my service gone, yeah. You know, and so it's, um, and then you see, then he gets taken off. So what's happened in this game for me is that he wants to get the three points and now he's turned it into a game where I'm going to hold what I've got now. It's taken yeah, off. And I think that's the right thing to do. Once I saw Lacazette coming on, I mm. thought, well, it's Aubameyang going off. 78 yeah. minute, I think it was, he's making yeah. that change. Yeah. He wasn't going to, why would he not start with them? Yeah. He certainly wasn't going to finish with them 1 0 up with both of them on the pitch. You know, so he's, he's disappointed, but I think in his heart, he's got to know it's the yeah. right tactical thing. If Lacazette's the man you're bringing on, he might have chosen to bring somebody else on, of course. But no, he shows his, his disgruntlement there, but, and, but every player hates coming but the off. Th the, the thing with, with me, I think at this stage of the season, the way the season's gone for Arsenal, um, I think that the fans, they need to see something now that's going to mm. give them some form of positivity. A for, bit of hope. Yeah, a bit of hope. Like, for instance, there's so a couple of young players, Miguel Laziz, Balogun. I think they need to start bringing those guys in for these mm. last... I would like to see them, because those yeah. are the kind of things... The fans see that say, OK, well, that's a little bit of something to give the fans something. It's not giving them anything. But, Glenn, if you're Mikel Arteta, it's not a great look, is it? Having a couple of players kind of almost question the substitutions in a way, one of them including your, your, your captain? No, no, I wouldn't be too bothered about that. I'd, no. be, I'd, be, I'd be absolutely distraught as a manager if I've got a smiling player coming off a pitch. <laughs> you know what I mean? True. You know, yeah. I, that that's, would concern yeah. me. I'd say he doesn't care enough. Yeah. You know, he, he, he's happy to come off. Yeah. You want that. They'll be all right. They've got the points in the dressing room. They'll be as good as gold. The music will be on. They'll be on the bus going home or whatever. You know, there'll be a happy little bunnies now. But at that moment when you come off, you want to play. You've got your pride. Yeah. You want to go on, you know, you want to help your teammates. But, um, no, I thought it was tactical. I thought it was the right thing to do. From the manager's point of view, he got it spot on. Mm. And I think if that was nil-nil at half-time, Arsenal wouldn't have played like that. But they had something to hold on to. And every Arsenal fan out there now has got to say, OK, can't keep playing like that. Mm. We won't win too many games playing like that. But we've beaten Chelsea at mm. Stamford Bridge. We haven't done it for ten years. Nobody's been... Man City couldn't have 
beat Chelsea recently. They're so, you know, they're in the Champions League. That is a fantastic result. Take away the performance as a, ga a game of football. Mm. They've got the three points. It, they didn't concede in the last minute. They didn't lose 2-1. Then you've got a problem playing like that. Long term, they mm. can't play like that, without a doubt. But they've beaten Chelsea, who, who are flying at the moment. Sit back and go, hallelujah. It's <laughs> a great three points. <laughs>